Hey, Chris. Hey. How's it going? <laughs> Great. Good. Thanks so much for being here with us. Um, we're excited to talk to you about your business and kind of dig into the depths of things that um, you know we're not really thinking about on maybe a day-to-day -day basis or not always out loud. So, um, perfect little bites. Tell me, tell me about your business. Uh, I'm a chef, so at its core, it's an in-home uh, kind of fine dining restaurant that I bring to you. Uh, I think it's. Yeah. For me, the challenge was always going out to eat. Um, it's kind of becomes a hassle, especially as you get older now. I have kids, so it's like getting a babysitter and then driving somewhere and dealing with parking and waiting. And then you know, I, I don't. I, I want to be able to bring an experience to you because I think there's so many fun reasons. One, I can customize to what you like. So if you want like a five course vegan Thai, I can do that. If you want like a three course French, I can do that. You know. Um, but experience, I think, is missing. As a chef, I got into the hospitality industry. I mean, that's what we call it. But you're removed from that because you're in the kitchen and it's filtered through servers and everything. And I really wanted to get back into kind of dealing with my customer one on one because I like that interaction. So I get to talk to you beforehand, find out who you are, what you like, uh, build a customized menu around that. And then I come into your house and do a fine dining plated dinner. I bring all my own china, all my own equipment. You just need to have a stove and an oven. And I bring all the cool stuff I need. So if I need to bring a pasta maker or a mixer because you don't have one, I'll bring it. And then everything's served to you in your home. I bring linens. I bring all the silverware, everything. Wow. So I'm curious what kind of sparked that idea. Because, um, you know, there's, yeah. there's a lot of traditional methods to go into. But what made you wake up one day and say, you know what, maybe I should try this? I started doing it as a side from a caterer I worked at. My wife's a chef as well. Um, and we worked for a caterer who did big functions. And they always had people call could you come cater my, my wife and I's anniversary? Um, and the catering company didn't really want to deal with it. But then they decided to kind of outsource it to us and said, hey, would you guys ever want to just go do a dinner for two in their house? Like, we, that's not our thing, but we'll let you use the kitchen here. And uh, I saw there was a market for that, and that was about 10 years ago. Wow. Uh, so kind of building the idea on that. And as time went on, I just kept thinking, I got to make that work. I know there's a market and started looking. Nobody was doing that. Um, so I joined the Personal Chefs Association, but they're geared towards coming into your house and making like five nights worth of meals and packing them and freezing them. But I think a lot's lost there. As a chef, you know, you're losing the presentation. It leaves a lot up to interpretation as far as are they going to actually bake it right or whatever. So I wanted to learn the, the logistics of going in and cooking in people's homes as opposed to restaurants, but then translate it to fine dining and restaurant style. So I kind of created a little hybrid there. Okay. And haven't found a lot of people doing that. So yeah, I was gonna say it's it's a really unique kind of a niche carved out in in the hospitality industry. So I'm curious, what made you take that leap? Because a lot of times when people aren't doing things, yeah, that leap can seem um, yeah. much deeper than than. Well, not. I started doing it as a side job, so I had that security net. You know, I I was doing it for five plus years while I still had a full-time job running a kitchen professionally. So it was a lot of days or weeks of no days off because I was working five days a week running a kitchen and then on the nights and weekends and days I was off doing it. Um, but I wanted to build up a clientele, make sure it was something that was going to work. Uh, I wasn't ready to just one day decide to go and do it. So I right. very methodically kind of built up to it. Okay. And then tell me about that moment when you know, let me back up actually. Tell me about working all day and all night, cooking just all day and all night. You know, how, how do you get through some of that? Because a lot of our entrepreneurs that are listening, um, you know, they're working a day job and working yeah. their dream job at the same time. So how, how tell me about the mental well, process I, behind that. I love it. I mean, food is all I've ever done. Uh, my mom said I want, told her when I was four or something that I wanted to be a cook. I've never not worked in restaurants. Wow. So for me, it was a hobby, and I think that's great. I mean, I think the best entrepreneurs take their passion and their hobbies and make it their job. And for me, you know, even before I had my business, I would still come home from work, read cookbooks, watch shows, talk to chefs, go out to eat. So it's always been my life. My friends are mostly chefs. You know, my wife was in the culinary business. So um, it makes it easy. So when you come home from work and then you're planning a menu for a client, you know, it's for me, easy and fun. And when your research and development is going to a fun Asian grocery store and then coming home and trying a bunch of new dishes, it doesn't really seem like work. It, it's, I like, I like that. It doesn't seem like work. So it can be when, still physically, mentally exhausting. Absolutely. Um, but you know, it's better than doing a job you really hate during the day and then doing it. Like I loved my day job, you know, still I was a chef, so. Right. What kind of advice would you give an entrepreneur that maybe is not 
um, not surrounded by the things that they love. Maybe the day job is mm -hmm. something that they have to do until they can do what they want to do. So what are some thoughts that you could maybe pass on to some folks? I think figure out who you are um, at your core. I think you really have to know yourself, know your strengths and weaknesses, and be honest. I think a lot of people aren't honest about um, whether or not they have the skills to do this or the guts or the whatever or the support system or can financially do it. You know, I think it's really scary. Um, I know some people jump kind of without really thinking it through and it works out. Uh, that's never been me. So it's kind of really getting to know what I was looking to do and uh, then trying to find the path to, to get there and kind of build the skill sets that I needed to kind of take the leap. Okay. So I heard you mention that you're your dad. So tell me a little bit about why it's important for you to set this type of example for your kids. I want them to see me enjoying my job um, and, and taking risks. I think, you know, I don't want to be 80 years old and, you know, what if and say, I wish I had, you know. Um, my dad worked for a company for 40 years. So that was my role model. I mean, he had a great work ethic, but he was not a risk taker. And, it, and then I saw him really hate his job for the last 15 years, but felt like he was trapped, you know, and just like, I'm gonna coast till retirement. And he ultimately walked out of his job on his last day. It was so frustrating. Wow. And that's nothing I, you know, ever would have expected him to do. And, um, you know, I turned 40 this summer and I'm kind of like halfway or so between my career and just feel like it's the time I've been doing this for 20 plus years and I've got another 20 plus years to go. And uh, just, I wanted to get in and do it and show my kids you can enjoy life, do something you love, make a career at it. And That's awesome. I love it. You also mentioned that your wife, um, from time to time, steps in with the business and helps you. So how's that dynamic with bringing in husband and wife and, and um, business partners, so to speak? It's, it's good. We have to find the, the boundaries of work because it's tough. You know, I came from running a big kitchen where I had 120 employees and I was the boss and was kind of, I was the final say, right. you know, um, and my wife um, was a chef. She's now a dietitian. So she brings a lot of nutrition support. We have a lot of customers who actually want kind of healthy eating. So consults, but when she's my sous chef, you know, um, I probably talk to her a little differently than I would my traditional sous chef in a restaurant, but it's great because she's honest with me. And I think the way that other people in restaurants hadn't been, you know, she gives me that kind of gut check and says, is this really how that's going to be? Or, um, keeps me in line a little bit sometimes. <laughs> we all need a little bit of that, right? <laughs> um, you know, you're cooking uh, these beautiful dinners for people, um, mostly in the evenings. How do you balance being away from your family during the times that they're at home having a meal when you're out preparing a meal for someone else? Well, you actually spend less time doing it because in general, I'm doing one customer a day. So if I were in um, the restaurant, the big place I was at before, it was more like an 11, 12, 13 hour day. Uh, you know, I'd get up most recently, my last job, I was leaving my house at 8.15 in the morning and getting home about 7.15, 15 at night. Um, with this, if I'm coming to your house for dinner and it's just one client, you know, dinner party of two or four, I might not even leave my house until four in the afternoon. So at least I'm home a lot longer. And I just miss, you know, a couple hours at night before my kids go to bed. And uh, I still am usually home and have a couple hours with my wife too. That's wonderful. What a great balance. What challenges have you faced and, and how have you overcome some of those things? I think the challenge is um, getting out there and just telling people what I do and networking. Uh, as I always saw myself as an introvert, I think that was the biggest thing. I was very quiet, reserved growing up, um, never rocked the boat, never asked people for things. I wanted to do it on my own. And then as you get in your own business, like you have to go out and do your pitch, your elevator pitch, uh, or deal with you know purveyors or clients or everyone. And just, I was never really comfortable talking. Like I wanted to just be in the kitchen, cooking, head down, do my thing. Right. Um, but as you go on in years, you have to get, you know, I'm running a bigger staff. And then as you go out on your own dealing with more people, like no one's gonna give you anything. It's especially harder on your own. Like if I want a job, I really have to go and find my clients. Or if I wanna be, um, you know, I've recently been in some magazines and newspapers and nobody came to me. Like I had to find editors and say, this is what I do, would you be interested in writing about it? Right. And that's so out of my comfort zone. Out of the comfort zone. I love that you brought that up because a lot of, a lot of entrepreneurs um, want to stay behind the work that they do. But when you become the entrepreneur, you become the, the many hat wearers. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about what kind of spearheaded you to get out of that comfort zone and, and how, 
how you you know recognize that this is something that you really need to be in the forefront of I think now. you take the first couple leaps and they pay off and hopefully they will pay off then you get a little more comfortable it's always the first couple times that you need to do something that you've yeah. never done um, and then you say wow that wasn't so bad you know I think for years it was always like playing it safe and like I said not rock the boat or not ask for things and then once you do you're like oh that, that was really easy I just said to that person, can you do this or help me with that? And they said yes. And I don't know why for so many years in your head you built up that like people are going to say no or they're going to make fun of you because they think your idea is dumb or something. What's the worst that's going to happen? But it took me a long time to get to that place where I felt comfortable that I could just go out and ask and do it. That's awesome. I, I love that you've had these incredible like um, full circle moments you know you've taken these risks and you're seeing the return coming around is there anything that that keeps you up at night or is there something that's that's keeping you from from taking the next step in your business right now I don't think so I mean it's scary it really is and I think just not knowing when you're gonna get paid again yeah that kind of stuff I think is I think it's probably the big barrier for a lot of entrepreneurs like if, especially if you're coming from a job you know having worked a job for 20 plus years where you get a steady paycheck and benefits and all that to just saying, I'm just gonna rip the Band-Aid off and go out and do it. And I've got customers lined up, you know, four or five in the next couple of weeks, but I don't know, how's it gonna be in January? How's it gonna be if the economy tanks? Like, so looking at diversifying what I do, what else can I be doing and kind of staying ahead of the curve and be um, proactive instead of reactionary. I have to ask you this, do you ever get tired of cooking? No. I, it, I wasn't picking up on it, but that you did. Do you ever just order a pizza and be like, you know what? Absolutely. This is what we're going to uh, do. <laughs> so I love food. So yes, I mean, we went out for food for dinner last night because it was just, you know, we like to eat out and doing some days I don't feel like cooking. People always ask my wife, do you have great dinners at home? And of course her answer is going to be no, because he's always working <laughs> and she works a full-time job. So quite often it's, you know, a very quick, easy meal or takeout from somewhere. It's, it's good to know that yeah. the, the, even the chef orders a, a pizza Abs every once absolutely. in a while. <laughs> Besides actually taking the initial risk of, of leaving your full-time job and, and taking this on full-time, what has been one of the most important decisions that has contributed to your success? Well, I think my jobs, I was actually seeing physical health issues from this. Um, stress and the things that stress can kind of do. And I never wanted to believe that it was stress. Um, and I think health and wellness are huge. And that's been a big change for me in the past couple of years, just getting into routines for exercise, eating well, meditation, things to get myself better all together. So it wasn't just getting away and doing my own thing creatively or being fulfilled in that way. I felt like I couldn't be physically and mentally healthy um, in the jobs that I was doing. It's a tough balance too, I think, when you're running your, your operation. So I'm not alluding that you don't have stress in your job, <laughs> um, but it sounds like you're in a much better, healthier place. So what kind of advice would you give um, some, of, some of the people that are thinking about taking this risk or maybe that are just kind of in it right now and saying, I love what I do, but I'm just so stressed out? Yeah. Um, for me, it, it was those, those big things. Like I really feel that diet, exercise, and meditation are life-changing. And just reading, you know, I listen to a lot of entrepreneur podcasts and read a lot of books. And the key thing that everyone's talking about is like, one, your routines and especially routines for health and wellness and getting up every day. And it doesn't have to be first thing, but can you do 30 minutes on the treadmill or the bike and drinking lots of water and getting eight hours of sleep and spending 10 minutes a day meditating? Like if I could just do that every day and get myself in that right place, so much better. And from there, the stress like kind of disappears. I mean, it's still there, but it's definitely more controlled. Right, um, right. Well, I feel like it's a mechanism that helps balance it out. So, yeah. you know, even when you have those kind of crazy moments, you know that you can rely on the things that help re recenter you. Yeah. I mean, the stress helps push. You know, right. I, I don't want to get complacent and think everything's all well and good. You need that, like, behind you. But when the stress overtakes things and anxiety kicks in, uh, that's where it's problematic. Yes. So... If a younger version of yourself came and hung out with us on the couch today, what advice or what would you change? What would you tell him? Take more risks when you're younger because it's easier. You know, I uh, got out of college and jumped into a safe job. 
you know, now it's much harder that I have a wife and kids and a house and we're kind of here. When you're young and you can go anywhere in the world and do anything and you go take a job and you don't like it, you can take another job, you know, your bills haven't added up. It's a lot easier. Um, but like I said, coming from a family where you're told you go to college, you get your degree and get your job and just kind of run that way, I locked myself in pretty early um, into these kind of stable jobs and I should have been riskier. But I know that wasn't in my DNA at the time. <laughs> it's definitely something that you have have grown with, which is huge because I think it's it's inspiring to know that just because you're one way doesn't mean that you can't take a risk. Um, now, later, you know, years down the road. Um, so what's up? What's up next on your list? What are, what's kind of getting you really excited right now? I'm trying to find interesting partnerships. Uh, you know, besides doing the in-home fine dining, I also do cooking lessons and cooking demos. So my wife and I are doing some nutritionally based cooking classes in the city of Frederick. Uh, I've been working with the library system, doing um, classes in the libraries as adult education, and finding some really cool entrepreneurs in the area who want to do things together. You know, you might own a clothing shop and want to do a pop-up there, working with wineries and breweries. So looking at people who are just really cool entrepreneurs, business owners who want to do something together that might not seem like a natural fit but have that same kind of energy and outlook and how can we combine forces and cross promote and do something really fun and create some buzz. It's always great to lock arms with other people that are doing things because the buzz is just so much stronger, Yeah, you know? Um, tell me a little bit about your, your pinky promise sign, what that, um, what that reads and what that means to you. So I won't allow fear to stop me from achieving my dreams. And I think that's been the big thing, you know, it's just the, the fear of what if it doesn't work out, the fear of what if people think my idea is stupid, you know, all those things that have kept me from doing it before now, whereas, you know, I probably could have gotten a jump 15 years ago on this really, but no looking back. Right. Um, and now I'm going forward with it. And I think you're just rocking and rolling. I mean, I just love what you're doing. I love that you, you went against the grain. Um, you know, you went against, um, what would have been, you know, typical personality traits, and you went just across the whole industry, and you're just like, you know what? If everybody's going left, I'm going to go right, and you know, you're a perfect example of doing that, taking the risk of doing yeah. that can can have huge rewards, happiness, health, yeah. family, you know, doing something that you love every day. And still, for me, figuring out how to minimize the risk because I'm not a super huge risk taker. You know, opening a restaurant where you need a million dollars and you have a lease and all this equipment. My business model is my equipment is pots and pans and plates and I come to your house and if it doesn't work out I can always go back to cooking somewhere you know I don't have this crazy amount of money in capital investments so that was how I kind of minimized the risk so I started looking because I knew I always kind of played it safe how can I have this really cool thing that I want to do but still have that little safety net there because um, that's what I needed but I also needed to jump in and do it full steam ahead because I knew if I kept working my job, I'd have that too much of a safety net. I would never really take the leap that would get me where I wanted to go. Right. What advice would you give um, an, entrepreneur, an entrepreneur right now, maybe somebody that's thinking about taking that leap that you took, um, but it's just kind of teetering on the fence with it? Uh, find like-minded people oh, and people who will challenge you. I think networking has been huge. You know, the the internet and social media is great because you can find, you can connect with your mentors, you can connect with your peers, you can see what people are doing. You can really get, um, you know, I found accountability partners online and mine was a guy who lived in California. And you just, you know, every couple of days check in with each other and see what you're doing um, and being able to do that. And I would say just talk to everyone and put your idea out there. Um, you know, keep working on it in your spare time. Any little bit of, you know, don't sit down and watch three hours of TV every night. If you're really going to get it done, it takes a lot of work. And, you know, don't sacrifice the big things like time with your family or going on vacation, but those silly little things maybe. That's amazing advice. Absolutely amazing. So I want to come full circle. And we talked about you coming coming into the home and, and bringing your equipment and preparing a meal. Tell me, tell me how that finishes out. So if you've come to my home and you've prepared this incredible meal for my husband and I, um, What's, how does that end then? What is, what is the completion of, of your time with, with my family? 
we're there. I'm there. I'm right now. I am perfect little bites. I'm at every event. I'm not, I don't outsource to anyone. So I'm there and I want to have that experience. So I'm going to come into your home after we've talked about kind of what I'm going to do and I'll still bring some surprises and I'm going to make dinner for you and serve it like we're at a restaurant. I'm also the front of the house guy. So I'm cooking, plating, bringing it out and you're sitting there enjoying dinner. Sometimes they want me to sit down with them and eat pour a glass of wine, that's great, you know, because it's a service thing. And it's really cool because I've done this for a long time in food. We used to be the help. I worked in catering, you'd go to someone's house and you were the guy in the kitchen that the hostess didn't want anyone to see. And now it's like, oh, you've got a personal chef and they are super excited about that. And that's only been a shift in the past five years. Um, so now getting to hang out with my customers sometimes, you know, you, you feel the vibe. Sometimes they just want a romantic anniversary dinner and I do stay more in the back, but quite often they want me to come out, talk about the dishes, the inspiration, you know, what I did and get my background. And that's really fun. And then when we're done, you know, I take all the dishes with me, clean your kitchen, leave. You have nothing left to do. You can be in your PJs in five minutes after I'm out the door. I think that's not a bad gig. <laughs> that's awesome. Chris, how can our listeners get in touch with you? Because I'm certain there's at least a half a million people that want to know so <laughs> how you come to our home. I'm Perfect Little Bites. My website is perfectlittlebites.com. You can find me at Facebook slash Perfect Little Bites. Google it, put it in on Perfect Little Bites on Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, everything. You'll find me. Okay, that's awesome. Chris, I want to thank you for being so open with us today. I think that your confidence and your creativity is really going to be an inspiration for a lot of people that just need just need that one little push. So thanks, thanks for so having me. Yeah, it's absolutely. Been great. This has been fun. Thanks.